It's our understanding that as many as nine or ten activists may have been killed. What is the actual number? Honestly, we don't know until now. Uh, the Israelis refuse to release the names of the people who were killed. They, re re they until now refuse also to release the bodies uh, to, of the people who were killed. They also refuse to release the names of the injured or the locations of where they're being treated in hospitals. So we actually have no idea how many people were injured, how many people were killed, where they were from. Their families have not been notified, obviously. And it's, a, it's an attempt to basically make these people disappear. Do you know if any Americans were wounded or killed? The uh, U.S. Uh, State Department has said so far that the information they've been given by the Israelis is that no American citizens. But the State Department is just taking the word of the Israeli government. We have no way of confirming this. Your wife was on the ship, Yes, one of the ships. Is she okay? Was she injured? She wasn't. I mean, she, when the Israelis came on her ship, which was one of the smaller passenger ships, uh, they did use physical force. They did punch and kick the activists, even though they didn't offer any resistance. They were filming the soldiers coming on board. And then later in the detention facility, my wife was also uh, physically abused there as well. And even today, when she was being escorted out to be released from the prison, a, so, uh, a, a police officer elbowed her in the face. Can you describe what happened on board these vessels from what you've heard from the people who were there? We've all seen various dueling video clips. What's your take? On the, on the ship with the, with the video clips, because we had live streaming video on that ship only uh, via satellite technology, um, Israeli we were broadcasting at the moment the commandos came down, and we had uh, journalists from Al Jazeera, from Press TV, from some Turkish channels, talking through what was happening live. And they said, and you could see on the video, Israeli commandos shooting as they came down on the ropes and att attacking the ship. The videos that were showed uh, from the Israelis and some of our video from later on during the assault uh, show that after, indeed, at least one person was killed and others injured, some of the activists on board did pick up uh, clubs and start to try to defend themselves. Do you stand by reports that the Israelis instigated the violence when they stormed the ship, firing tear gas, electroshock weapons, and rubber bullets? And also, it should be said, live ammunition. Um, they came on board shooting all of these weapons at our activists. They've done this, you know, this is not the first time that they've taken our ships. They've boarded our ships before. They have used physical force to, on our ships. On a Lebanese cargo ship that was brought by activists uh, just over a year ago, uh, live ammunition, rubber bullets, and uh, sound grenades were used against the passengers on that ship as well, who offered no resistance whatsoever as commandos descended from helicopters. If you know, you will be greeted with this kind of response. Why continue to do it? We've had nine missions to Gaza. Five of them actually arrived in Gaza, at the shores of Gaza, unimpeded by the Israeli military. Four of our missions have been stopped in, in different ways. Um, the blockade of Gaza is illegal. It, it, Israel is the occupying power of Gaza to blockade the Gaza Strip uh, any, by any occupying power. Blockading its territory that is under occupation constitutes a, collect, a form of collective punishment, which is a war crime according to the Geneva Conventions. The international community has all denounced the blockade. Even President Obama has called for the lifting of the blockade and the delivery of humanitarian aid. But words alone are not going to change uh, Israel's policy. We need to expose it to the world. We need to break the blockade. I wish that Free Gaza didn't have to exist. There, if there was just one government that would send one cargo ship with its own goods and, and states to Israel, this is a, gov a government-sponsored cargo ship from France, from Belgium, from the United States, I guarantee you the Israelis would not stand in the way of that ship and the blockade would end. Was your main point to deliver humanitarian aid or to run the blockade and make a point? It's both. I Israel has established a blockade and limited what items are allowed into Gaza, what basic foodstuffs, reconstruction material, medicines. Israel has made humanitarian assistance political by virtue of its blockade. We are challenging the blockade and delivering humanitarian aid at the same time. Israeli authorities have displayed knives, what appear to be metal rods and sticks. They say we're on the ship or ships and not part of any legitimate humanitarian cargo. What is your reaction to that? Like I said, uh, the passengers did grab what they could to defend themselves after the Israelis had already attacked other passengers, including killing one. I don't necessarily condone this type of action on behalf of our passengers. I wish, honestly, that they hadn't. But at the same time, uh, I can understand how in a circumstance like that where people are where shooting is random, where you have the ship being stormed by hundreds of soldiers, that somebody might decide to try to protect himself or protect somebody else. I understand another cargo ship is being dispatched to challenge Israel's blockade of Gaza and is expected to arrive early next week. 
Is that a wise move under these tense conditions? There's been, uh, uh, unfortunately, some incorrect information about that ship. It's actually uh, still in the eastern Mediterranean. It is not yet approaching Gaza. And we are, uh, planning, we are planning on another mission. We are strategizing now. As you can imagine, developments are unfolding, and we're assessing what is the best time to send that ship. But and at the same time, we're also starting to receive offers of people willing to donate more ships. So I think we will not only have another cargo ship going, but quite likely another flotilla. If yours is a mission of mercy, why run the blockade? Why not just have the Israelis inspect it and say, yes, it's medical supplies or it's food, humanitarian aid, and it will go through? Because it won't go through. It's not just that Israel is looking for, to allow in only humanitarian supplies. There's a, a limited list of between 75 and 80 items that Israel permits into Gaza, uh, basic food and basic medicines. Nothing more complex than that. Certainly no machinery, not any kind of uh, machinery for Gaza's hospitals, not the kind of machinery that's needed for fixing Gaza's water systems, not the kind of prefabricated housing that we had on our ships. Most of the goods on our ships are clearly humanitarian in nature or reconstruction in nature. Virtually not a single one of those items would have been permitted into Israel. So this line that Israel is giving to the world that just show, you know, give us your stuff and we'll deliver it for you is bogus. The United Nations has consistently called on Israel to open up Gaza to uh, remove this ridiculous restriction that it's placing on Gaza and allow in all the kind of items into Gaza. But more it, importantly, let yeah. me just state, this is a question also of fundamentally of freedom. Palestinians in Gaza are inherently unfree because of the occupation and the blockade of Gaza. I don't think that we should be struggling for a world where we, uh, where we tell people, we'll struggle for you only so that you can barely survive with humanitarian aid. Our struggles need to be for the freedom of all people. Now, you have come to talk with me, and it should be on the record that you set no preconditions. I certainly wouldn't have agreed <laughs> to them if you had. Neither would I. <laughs> and you are here willing to answer uh, any question I have. Absolutely. Um, you have been called a pro-Palestinian activist. You've been called a Jewish turncoat, even a Jewish Taliban. Yeah. And this is not the first time you've heard these words. But it is the first time I will hear personally from you mm. your response. These are harsh words. These are harsh words. Um, anybody uh, who dares to stand up and speak out for the Palestinians, whether they be Jewish or Christian or Muslim or Buddhist or whatever, the more you do it, the more you speak up and question the logic of Israel's control and occupation of the Palestinians, the more likely you are to be tainted or, or targeted with these kinds of uh, smears. Uh, the attacks against me are something, you know, that I can live with, uh, you know, in terms of these words. It doesn't affect me or my work. They're all totally bogus. I think my record and my actions are clear in what I've done in my life, that I stand up for human rights, that I stand regardless of skin color, regardless of race, regardless of religion. I've been an activist on Palestine. I've been an activist on Darfur. I've been an activist on Iraq. I've been an activist on Afghanistan. I've been an activist here in the United States when I was younger, marching just a few blocks from here for the plight of the Russian Jews under the Soviet Union, calling Why for Why do you freedom. think you engender in some quarters such a a repulsed response to bring them to use such labels for you? I mean, it's not just me. There are other, you know, Norman Finkelstein and, and Noam Chomsky and, and others. I mean, it's not just me, but I think it's partially because I'm willing to speak out and I'm unintimidated by these efforts to silence me. And, you know, that I think irks people. And, uh, you know, they'll just have to keep getting irked. Israel says they offer to inspect and truck in the cargo. Is that true? And if so, would that not have avoided this horrendous loss of life? It's not true. We did not receive any such offers by Israel ahead of time. In fact, if you go back, you can see the quotes from uh, the Defense Minister Ehud Barak, from the Foreign Minister Abigdor Lieberman, and from the Deputy, Defense, uh, Deputy Foreign Minister Danny Ayalon, all of whom called for and said they were going to, from the start, turn back our ships and use all force necessary, including lethal force, to stop. This is a preemptive incitement against our, against our mission. And for some reason, this, uh, Israel seems to have forgotten that it was making these statements just uh, two weeks ago and, le and less. Uh, Israel did not offer to take in the goods. And as I said earlier, there's virtually nothing on our ships that Israel would have approved because it doesn't meet the standards of their list of 80 items. Now, let's be clear. This is 80 items, including all kinds of food, all kinds of medicine, all kinds of machinery. If you want chocolate in the Gaza Strip, you can't get it from the port of Ashdod where Israel unloads cargo to deliver to the Gaza Strip. 
the only way to get chocolate in Gaza is if it comes through the tunnels that are dug into Egypt. You may agree that all blockades have endings. The Cuban Missile Crisis, the Falklands War, there was a blockade that ended. How do you see this one ending? Well, I would, I would say that this one is already closer to ending as a result of our actions, as a result of, of Israel going in and massacring the people on board. I think Israel has done now more to further the ending of the blockade than anything we could have done. They could have just sat aside and let us sail our ships into Gaza. You wouldn't be interviewing me right now. Most uh, news outlets wouldn't have paid attention. Security Council wouldn't have met for seven hours last night. And probably the blockade would be just as you know un unspoken of as it was beforehand. I think, though, that we're closer now to it ending, and, and I hope it will end as soon as maybe even tomorrow. But uh, Does that mean you believe the lives that were lost were not in vain? No, I don't think that anybody's life should have been taken in this. I don't think anybody should have paid a price, such a sacrifice for this. Uh, and I will never...